Jaden Daniels is probably one of the most polarizing prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft. He's a hot name after winning the Heisman Trophy, but he's not expected to go first overall by really anyone. Caleb Williams probably has that one locked up. The question then becomes, who will be the second quarterback off the board at two to Washington, and who's still going to be there at three when the Patriots are on the clock? Now, Jaden Daniels is certainly an option for both the Commanders and New England, but that all really depends on how they view Drake May and JJ McCarthy as well. All three have shown incredible potential at the college level, but it's also safe to say that Jaden Daniels at his peak was probably the best. There's a reason why Jaden Daniels just won the Heisman. He was the best player in college football, and he deserves his flowers. But that doesn't exactly mean he's the best or even the second best quarterback in the upcoming draft. This draft will be the fourth ever where two different Heisman winning quarterbacks will get selected. The most recent was in 2018, when Baker Mayfield went first overall and Lamar Jackson Jackson was taken with the last pick in the first round. Lamar has already won two MVPs, and Baker Mayfield just cashed in on a big deal. Those were both good takes looking back at this point. Three years before that, we saw two Heisman winners go back to back, Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota. Neither one stuck around past their rookie deals, but both have started games in the past two years. Then all the way back in 2010, Sam Bradford went first overall and Tim Tebow went at 25. Both had some good moments, but were never really long-term solutions at quarterback. And now you can almost certainly add Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels to the group. The 22-year-old Caleb will likely go first to Chicago, and Daniels should follow soon after, after a successful and long five years in college. There's a lot of film on Jaden Daniels just because of how long he started in college, but there's no doubt that his best year was last year. Jaden Daniels was absolutely phenomenal last season. LSU started off the year with a tough loss to number eight Florida State, where he threw a single touchdown and had a pick, but that actually ended up being his only game of the season where he only threw for a single touchdown. Daniels had four or more total touchdowns in nine games last year. In mid-November against Georgia State, he threw for six touchdowns and ran for two more, and he followed it up with four passing touchdowns against Texas A&M the next week. He was fun as hell to watch, and it was pretty evident that he was playing great football, but there were still plenty of questions about him winning the Heisman. LSU lost three games on the year, and were certainly not going to be a college football playoff team. Other than the loss to FSU, they lost to number 20 Ole Miss in a shootout and lost to number eight Alabama by two scores. LSU was just one in three against ranked opponents, with the lone win coming against number 21 Missouri by 10, as Daniels had three passing touchdowns and one rushing. The Tigers just didn't have as much team success compared to some of the other front runners for the Heisman like Michael Penix or Bo Nix did, but Jaden Daniels was clearly the most valuable player in the country. He ended up throwing for 3,812 yards, 40 touchdowns, and 4 interceptions, and rushed for 1,134 yards and 10 touchdowns. Simply put, he was sensational. Sensational. He had a huge breakout Heisman season just one year after transferring to LSU, but it's not the first time we've seen that story. Joe Burrow essentially did the same thing. He transferred from Ohio State after three seasons and had a solid first season before breaking out and winning the Heisman and a national championship and route to being the first overall pick. Now, Daniels won't go first and doesn't have a ring, but it's a similar story as both transferred to play for a new or somewhat new head coach and dominated in year two. Like Burrow, Jaden Daniels wasn't some star in his first year in Baton Rouge, but he was still good. 2022 was the first year for Brian Kelly as the head coach at LSU after he came over from Notre Dame and he landed Jaden Daniels on the portal. It was a good first season under Kelly. LSU was ranked as high as number five in the country in late November. They had lost to FSU to start the season and later fell to number eight, Tennessee, but had a stretch where they won nine of 10 with wins against number six, Alabama, and and number seven Ole Miss. The Tigers closed out the regular season with a loss to Texas A&M and then lost to number one Georgia and the SEC Championship. Jaden Daniels had a good season. He had four games with three or more total touchdowns and overall passed for 2,913 yards, 17 touchdowns and three interceptions and he rushed for 885 yards and 11 touchdowns. There were some good wide receivers on his two teams at LSU. Kayshawn Booty was a reliable receiver in 2021 and 
and had his third straight 500 plus yard season. And of course, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. are likely going to be first rounders in the draft. When you play at an SEC school, especially LSU, you expect to have some big names and a lot of talent around you. And that was absolutely the case for Jaden Daniels. But he also played with some really good players before he was even at LSU. Jaden Daniels spent the first three years of his collegiate career at Arizona State, where Brandon Ayuk was his top target as a freshman. He had nearly 1,200 yards, while Eno Benjamin rushed for a thousand yards. Rashad White was then the Sun Devils running back and had over a thousand yards in 2021, which was his and Jaden Daniels last season there. Johnny Wilson also played who was coming off of back-to-back 600 plus yard seasons at Florida State. Ahead of the 2021 season, the NCAA announced that ASU was under investigation for recruiting violations and Jaden Daniels' mom was named in the allegations after booking more than $1,100 in flights for recruits. Head coach Herm Edwards stayed employed for another season season before getting fired, and then in 2023, ASU self-imposed a bowl ban. Five full-time coaches were fired because of the investigation including the alleged ringleader, now Raiders head coach, Antonio Pierce. It was a mess, and that's why Jaden Daniels decided to jump to LSU, which clearly worked out for him. He did once show a lot of promise at ASU, especially as a freshman in 2019. He started in 12 games for the Sun Devils and passed for 2,943 yards, 17 touchdowns, and three interceptions, and rushed for 355 yards and three touchdowns. Arizona State went eight and five overall and picked up big wins over number 18 Michigan State, number 15 Cal, and number 6 Oregon with Justin Herbert. The 2020 season was obviously a mess for everyone because of COVID, but Daniels got to start in 4 games and had 701 yards and 5 touchdowns to an interception, adding 223 yards and 4 touchdowns on the ground. In 2021, Arizona was ranked number 25 in the preseason AP poll, but they didn't really live up to the hype. They beat number 20 UCLA and lost to number 23 BYU. The Sun Devils went 8-5 and, and Jaden Daniels really struggled throwing the ball. He finished the year with 2,380 yards and 10 touchdowns with 10 interceptions. He did, however, have a big season rushing with 710 yards and 6 touchdowns. It took some time and a transfer to LSU, but Jaden Daniels did develop into a very good college quarterback. Jaden Daniels was a top recruit going into college and is now a top prospect going into the draft. The question now becomes, where does he land? There are plenty of quarterback needy teams drafting high in the 2024 NFL Draft, and there's some good quarterback names too. Caleb Williams is the big one. He won the Heisman Trophy in 2022 and has long been expected to be a first overall pick and that'll probably be the case. The Bears just traded Justin Fields to the Steelers, so you have to think the pick is Caleb. That leaves Jaden Daniels along with Drake May and possibly JJ McCarthy. It's really gonna come down to who Washington wants with the second overall pick. Next up on the clock is the Patriots, and chances are they'll probably be drafting a quarterback. If they don't, I'll be livid. The Giants might go quarterback at six, and same goes for the Vikings at 11, Broncos at 12, and Raiders at 13. Other than Caleb Williams, Williams, it feels like any of those other quarterbacks could drop. Only time will tell. Drafting a quarterback in the NFL is such a difficult task. So much of it has to do with the situation and everything around that quarterback. And while I'd expect Jaden Daniels to be in either Washington or New England next year, we don't really know if it'll be a perfect fit. Jaden Daniels was amazing in his fifth year of college, and he showed a ton of promise. But now, it's time to see if it'll actually translate.